so you're all booked and ready to go on your Royal Caribbean cruise. But there are a few things you need to do before you even get near your ship. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, Rob from Cruise Seekers, and today we're going to talk about some of the things you are going to need to do before you even get a, a foot on your Royal Caribbean cruise. There are 11 things that we're going to go through. I hope you're going to enjoy this. I think you will. But before we get into this, I would like to invite each and every one of you to think about subscribing to Cruise Seekers. We would love to have you part of the crew. If you enjoy cruise news, if you enjoy cruise vlogs, if you enjoy cruise tips, this is where you want to be. If you like this video also give it a thumbs up please leave a comment down below we do love comments and we do answer them all thanks in advance all right here we go folks the very first thing we're going to talk about what you're going to need to do before you even get on your royal caribbean ship is make sure you do your check-in 45 days before your cruise so the reason why you want to do this check-in as soon as possible if you want to get on the ship as soon as possible be one of the first people on the ships get one of those early arrival times you're going to want to get online and do your check-in as soon as it opens. Be prepared with all your travel docs, have everything all ready for you, have your passport so you can put those ID numbers in. That's what you're gonna to wanna to have ahead of time. Also, if you're gonna be checking in via your computer, make sure you have on your computer already some photos that you're going to use for your security check-in. Mainly because a lot of computers, unless you're on a laptop, doesn't have a camera. So make sure those, those shots are taken care of ahead of time. Remember, you can't have any kind of sunglasses on or any hats with this security picture. If you're checking in via the app on your phone, don't worry about it. You can take a selfie right then and there. And speaking of apps, the other thing you're going to want to do when you book your cruise and getting ready for your trip is download the app as soon as possible. Not only is your app going to be your kind of go-to thing for your daily cruise activities and seeing what the heck's going on on the ship, you're going to use the app for all sorts of things. You're going to be booking your shows through your app, you're going to be booking your dining reservations through the app. It is a pretty much fundamental piece nowadays. I know a lot of people don't like to have phones anymore when they're on vacation because they just kind of want to cut off. Have something though. Have a, a nice device. I kind of really started to enjoy the app. Originally, I was a person that was like, I'm on a ship. I want to go get away from all the technology. I work in technology. I want, I want to get away from technology, right? I just don't want to deal with it. But you know what? These apps are getting better and better. The Royal Caribbean app is also pretty darn good too. So definitely get that app. Not only do you have the ability to check in your reservations and stuff like that, you get to see the menus for the specialty dining rooms. You get to see the menus for your main dining rooms. All those things are all available. One of the things I like to do, especially with the app, make sure that I have it ahead of time is because when I get to the ship, right? When I'm waiting to allow myself onto the ship, because I usually have one of those early arrival times the ship might not be ready yet, but I might be able to still connect to the ship's Wi-Fi. And while I'm waiting, and if I have the app downloaded on my phone already, I can start doing my dining reservations. I can see the show times, make sure I can tailor make all my reservation times to make sure I get the most out of my cruise. So yeah, get that app. Now that you're all booked and ready to go, right? The one thing you got to do is if you're not kind of working with a travel agent and you're doing this on your own, make sure you get all your pre-cruise arrangements taken care of. Make sure you get your hotel, get that booked early. Definitely do that at least, at least 35, 60 days ahead of time. Do some research, figure out where you're going to park. If you're going to be driving to the port, see where a good place is to park your car. You don't necessarily have to park right next to the ship. That's going to be the most expensive parking in the whole area. If you want to save some money, you might be able to find a real good place that you can park and then they'll shuttle you to the ship. You're booking airline and stuff like that. See how you're going to park at the airport for that period of time. Think about booking a off-site parking location. You'll save a ton of money versus parking at the airport. And if you are getting close to the cruise and you're already booked, remember, just like checking your cruise prices, check your hotel prices. They can go down too. See if that reservation that you made a few months back has gone down in price. You might save yourself some money too. The other thing you might want to think about doing is kind of scheduling your transfers to and from the port with the airport to and from the um, airport to the, say, um, your hotel, from the hotel to the port, those type of transfers. Think about how you're going to do that, figure out what you want to do, and then book those two. Okay, now we're getting a little closer to cruise day, right? And now what you're going to want to do is start to get organized. You want to get some packing lists going. You want to get all your information that what you want to bring on a piece of paper. 
There are plenty of places where you can get great packing lists for men, great packing lists for women, great packing lists for your kids. Take a look on the internet, find those lists, use them. Also, just don't think about clothes either, right? Think about your RXs, your, your prescription drugs, write that down. Think about all the different types of electronics you're gonna to wanna to bring, write that down. And then you can start putting out these things into an area, like if you have an extra bedroom in your house or in your apartment or anything along those lines, kind of put an area in that, in that location to have for your cruise, right? So you can start staging stuff. These are the things I wanna bring. You can try them on there, see if it still fits the right way. If it does, great, put it on the hanger, put it on that little clothes rack as you're waiting to go. If you find something that you're saying, oh, I really wish I had something like this, you know ahead of time, you now can go shopping for it and get it before you cruise. Also, when you're thinking about your devices and stuff like that, think about other things for your devices. Extra batteries. How am I gonna charge my phone if I'm away from a plug for an extended period of time? How am I going to um, make sure that I have enough memory on my camera, right? Those type of things. So think about extra memory cards. Think about a portable charging device for your phones. Those type of things. Also in your cabin, there's not going to be a large amount of power choices, right? So think about a, some sort of like station that you can plug into one of the plugs there that you can charge multiple devices from. There are plenty of things that you can get online at Amazon that does not have a surge protector so that you can kind of extend your ability for charging. Look at those things. There are a lot of places where you can find cruise rated extension cords, cruise rated extra um, extra outlets for your phones and stuff like that. We'll even have some USB charging locations on those things too. It's a great thing. Also, don't forget about the stuff to carry your stuff. There was one time I went on a cruise and I was like, oh, this is going to be great. Now we just didn't have anything to bring to the beach or to bring on our excursion. So now I make sure I write down to bring a beach bag, bring a small backpack of some sort, those type of things. It's kind of crazy that you forget these things when you go on a trip, but you know, it's important. Now you got to figure out what are you going to do when you're on vacation, right? The cruise does a great job in keeping you very entertained while you're on the ship. But sometimes when you're at port, you're going to want to visit this place, right? You're going to figure out what the heck am I going to do here? Do some research about the ports that you're going to go to. Take a look at what is offered by the cruise line. Then do some research online to see if there's other places that have an offering pretty much the same thing, but at a significant lower price. It might save you some money, but also remember, if you're going to book outside of the cruise line, there's two things you gotta worry about, right? You gotta worry about your timing. You gotta make sure you get back to the ship well in advance. Don't give yourself an hour before you have to get back. Give yourself at least two, maybe even three. Some of these Caribbean islands, the traffic can be crazy. The other thing you got to worry about if you're booking outside of the cruise line is you got to worry about your transportation costs, right? Even though you might be saying, oh, I'm going to save a decent amount of money. If it's going to cost you an extra 20, 30, 40 dollars to get to and from this location, then you know what? The cruise price might not be as bad as you think. Now that we got our excursions out of the way, some other things that we always like to book ahead of time is, you know, maybe my wife might want to get a blowout with her hair and maybe a wash and a blowout for the formal nights for her pictures, get that booked early because you know what? Those blowouts and washes go fast on formal nights. Get that booked early. And guys, don't forget about you. If you're gonna be taking some pictures, you know, trim up your beard a little bit, maybe get a haircut if you have some more hair than I. It's a good thing to do before you actually take your pictures for your formal night. Just get yourself picture perfect, right? Now, if you're a person that loves to cruise with a drinks package, definitely book that as soon as possible. Same thing Wi-Fi book that as soon as possible. With Royal Caribbean, they do have something called dynamic pricing, right? Even if you book it right away, right? If the price goes down, you can always cancel it and book it at the lower price. If you book it at the time that you want it, at least you know you've got it. And who knows, that might be the lowest price you've ever seen. The other thing I like to do is kind of do some research about what the menus are going to be on the main dining room, right? This way I could kind of plan out what nights I might want to go to specialty dining, especially if it's something that doesn't really tickle my fancy in the MDR, right? That might be the perfect day to go out to specialty dining. So yeah, do your research. Use the app that we talked about before. Now, other people do like to book spa treatments. I don't usually book spa treatments before going on the ship. I usually tend to find, believe it or not, you get the best spa deals on the ship. Now, it used to be a time when Royal will allow you to book your show reservations through your app before you get on the ship. 
it's not going on right now, but who knows, that might change in the very near future. You know, with COVID, they now a lot make you do your bookings when you're on the ship for your different shows, etc. But who knows? It might change. So always check. Check to see if you could book your shows. Do that if it's allowed. One of the other things I love to do before actually getting on my ship is joining a roll call of some sort for my sailing. So you can join roll calls in many different locations. Facebook is a great place to join roll calls. There's usually a group for your sailing, for your ship. Just do a search in Facebook. You probably find a place for a group for your sailing. There's also a website called cruisecritics.com. They do have roll calls for every, every line you could possibly think of for every ship, for every sailing. Take a look there. The reason why I like to go to roll calls is because it's, it's kind of twofold, right? Hey, you kind of get to meet some people who are going to be on the ship via, you know, just chatting, etc. You might kind of click with someone just from the way they post and the way you guys are bantering back and forth. Who knows? You might make a cruise buddy before you even get on the cruise, which is cool. It's also a great resource for first time cruisers. A lot of times you can post a question. You don't know about something about the ship. You don't know about how something is going to work on the ship. Just throw your question out there. These are great, great resources for you for your first time cruisers. And the other thing, as I said, right, making these cruise buddies can really become very advantageous, right? Especially if you're going like to say Coco K and you want to get one of those cabanas, but they're pretty darn pricey and you're only two people and you're like, I don't need a big cabana. You can get a group of people from this group to maybe split a cabana and now you can defray this large cost across three groups of people. And now, all of a sudden, the cost is reasonable and now you get to enjoy that cabana that you thought you would never be able to enjoy. The other cool thing is you'll see some events that will be posted on these groups and these roll calls, all sorts of things like slot pulls, um, bar crawls, you name it, game nights. It gets crazy, but it's a lot of fun, right? You got some other avenues of entertainment with other people outside of what the cruise is providing you. And that is sometimes one of the best memories you're going to have on the cruise. All right, now we're getting a little closer to the day of the cruise day, right? And now we're kind of thinking, okay, what are some of these last minute things I'm going to need? One of the things you're going to want to do is visit your bank. You're going to want to visit your bank during business hours because you're going to probably want to go up to the teller, not just to an ATM. The reason why you're going to want to talk to a teller is you're going to want to get a decent amount of cash in small denominations, right? And that's hard to kind of just deal with trying to go to a store or anything like that to get singles or fives, just go to the bank, say, hey, I need about $75 in ones and about $75 in fives, right? That's usually sufficient. That's usually what I bring, about $150 in that small denomination. The reason why I use that, this is for my like ad hoc tipping. Someone's giving me really good service. I have a real good waiter that's running my drinks back and forth. I'll throw them a couple bucks every now and then here and there, and I'll just get better service. Same thing with my bartenders, right? I'm sitting at the bar. I'm giving them a couple bucks here and there. You know, now it's getting, you know, he gets to know me and he gets to know what I like and he will change up on me and he would even maybe give me a little bit of a heavier pour or who knows, maybe a little bit of a higher caliber of alcohol in my next drink. There's also other people that are kind of off the ship that you don't think about that you're going to need to tip, like the porters at the port, right? They're going to be handling your bags. Orders at the airport. You know, if you check in your bags at this, you know, at the check-in station right when you, you know, pull up to the airport and you drop them off, you're gonna want to give them a couple bucks here and there just to get your, you know, your luggage and take care of your luggage for you well. Shuttle drivers is another one that you're gonna want to throw a couple bucks to because they're gonna be helping you with your bags on and off the shuttle bus. Those are the type of people that you're going to want to have some cash on you. Now, if you're also a person that goes to the casino, you might want to think about withdrawing your bankroll at that time for your cruise at the bank when you're there. Main reason being is because, you know, it does cost a lot of money to withdraw cash from the ATMs on the cruise ship. It's a, usually a steep fee. The other thing, too, is if you pull money out of your account from your shipboard account, there's a fee associated to that, too. So if you want to avoid those high fees, bring your bankroll in cash before you even go to the ship, right? Do it while you're at the bank. You'll save the fees. And also it helps you with maintaining your bankroll and making sure you don't keep on, you know, pulling money out of the bank or pulling money out of your shipboard account. Finally, when you're at the bank, you know, think about also withdrawing some cash for when you're at port. You might want to have some cash for going to shopping there as well. Some of the small bodegas, some of the small marketplaces, the marquetos and those type of places on the on, in Mexico and the different Caribbean islands. They'll have little you know, vendor markets all over the place. A lot of those places do not take credit card. You're going to want to have cash. 
And if you happen to be going on a Royal Caribbean cruise outside of the United States or outside of the Caribbean or Mexico, definitely think about getting some of your local currency as well before you go. So you might need to do that with your bank ahead of time, saying I'm gonna need X amount of money in euros or X amount of money in whatever currency you're going to need. Make sure you get that ahead of time. Now this is something that I used to do all the time, but now I really don't have to do it as much because I do travel a lot. You might wanna think about calling your credit card companies ahead of time before you get on your cruise. Now, as I said, if you do travel a lot, this is probably something you don't have to worry about, but if you don't, definitely call your credit card companies. It will help. Now, what I would always also tell people too is, Make sure if you don't have a credit card, right? If you only have a debit card, think about getting a debit card that you can load up with your own cash that you're going to want to spend on the trip. Something like a Chime card or something along those lines, right? With, with your actual name on it, those type of things. Because what can happen is if you bring your debit card, God forbid you lose your wallet, you get pickpocketed, you know, that debit card is associated to your checking account. And who needs to have that hassle? You lost your debit card. Now you're worried about what the heck's going to happen to my bank account. Don't don't deal with it. Get a Chime card with your name on it that's associated to your address. Put all your cruise money that you're going to want to spend while you're on board into that Chime card. That's going to be your credit card you're going to use when you're off the ship, what you're going to use for your onboard account. That's what you're going to want to do. Just make sure you stay within your budget. Always watch your folio on the app. Always watch your folio on the TV. Again, app, right? <laughs> app is important. Make sure you stay within your budget. All right, now if you do have medications that you do take regularly, one of the things I always like to tell people when you are going on a cruise and you're preparing for a cruise, you might need to talk to your pharmacist to, for two things. First thing, make sure you have enough medication for not just the period of time that you're going to be away, right? Make sure you get your refills and make sure you have enough medication to not only last the time that you're going to be away, but also at least a week thereafter, right? Because you just never know what's going to happen. And if you don't have a tremendous amount of medication, think about bringing the bottles for your medication rather than just being in a pill box of some sort. Because the important thing is, is a lot of times, people don't know what the dosages are, right? They know what the num you know, what they are taking, but they don't know the exact number of milligrams. If you do have your medication bottle, it will tell you your dosage, it will tell how many times you take it a day. Most people remember that, but they don't remember the dosage. So make sure you have those bottles because if case you need to talk to a doctor and let them know exactly what you're taking and what your dosage is, make sure that is available for them to see. Also, God forbid, if you're not able to even say exactly what you take or what the dosage is and what the schedule is, you know, and you're relying upon your family member to do that for you, they might not know. So have those bottles. And if you do have a lot of medication, go to your pharmacist and ask them to print out what your regular medication is on a piece of paper and bring it with you. Speaking about printing things, one of the last few things that we're going to talk about as a tip to remember is print everything. Print out your set sale pass. Print out your final invoice that you received from Royal Caribbean or your travel agent or your cruise showing a zero balance. Print out all the things that you purchased from the cruise planner. Make sure you have all that information to confirmation numbers, those type of things. Print out your hotel reservations. Print out your parking um, reservations. Print out your transfer information. Take those hard copies, put it in a folder, put it in that backpack that we were talking about earlier on and getting ready for your cruise. Get it all together so that you have it because God knows technology has a funny way of failing when you least expect it and when you need it the most, right? Wi-Fi is not working 100% great at the port. Whatever it might be, just make sure you have a printed copy. It's always good to have. And the last thing we're going to talk about is before you start closing up your suitcase for the last time, getting ready to get on your plane or get to the cruise port, you're going to want to check the weather of where you're going because sometimes you never know, you might get a abnormally cool day in the Caribbean or you might get an abnormally warm day in Alaska. Maybe I should bring a pair of shorts for this day in Alaska. It's saying it's going to be 80 degrees over in Juneau. I might want to wear shorts instead of all these jeans that I'm packing. Or you're going to the Caribbean and it looks like on one day it's going to be about 75 degrees, but at night it's going to be about 55 degrees. I might want to pack a hoodie or something along those lines while I'm walking around the ship at night. 
So there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed this little video about things that you're going to want to do before you step a foot on your Royal Caribbean cruise. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. So if you do have a tip on your own, leave a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to have that conversation. So until we talk again next time, this is Rob from Cruise Seekers reminding each and every one of you to always seek the seas. Bye now.